This is one of those moments when the sun just keeps coming and going at the, and the clouds are, are closing in. So I'm just being a bit careful to change what I'm painting. I'm just going to block in some of these sassafras leaves. And uh, there'll be sassafras leaves are quite big compared to the uh, beech myrtle. Um, they're a jagged leaf and uh, they come off the branch in pairs basically. So coming off in the same spots. Now I don't go in and paint all the little jags um, because frankly you don't see the jags unless you stop and focus in on the leaf itself. Then you go, oh yeah, there's a jag on that. But normally speaking you don't see it. But it just means that I could be a bit rough around the edges about how I put this in. So this is just going to be leave parts that I'm going to paint onto later um, as I come I sort of want to get a sense of these particular leaves coming forward. In front of this branch, in front of all this lovely sun sign. So when the sun disappears, which is sort of coming in and out at the moment, and the clouds are coming in, and it is forecast to be cloudy um, within the next hour without any sun at all. Um, this is a good activity to do, so you can sort of not waste your time as you come out just to, to do some stuff which doesn't require the light. And perhaps you can come in later on and add that light. Add the highlights to these leaves later on once they're dry from the first go. almost look like a vine. They're not a vine, but they have got similar patterns to that. There's some beautiful structural stuff in here that I'll highlight later. The moment the sun's shining on it. It depends on where your sun shines. Um, depends on uh, what detail you, you're putting in in a particular area. There's a few there on that branch. Those branches I've just painted in coming up and it's filling this area here with uh, sassafras leaves and it's just twitching up. It's really nice how that sort of does that. So this dark in front of the light will push, push the, uh, will bring the tree forward. But it also has the advantage of um, giving a contrast to the bright, beautiful light that's in there. So. so when you, you know, when you lose your light, you get a bit disheartened. It's been it's really difficult to find painting time here in winter in Tasmania and, and it's not winter now, it's spring, it's October, but hey, it's halfway through spring. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we don't really get spring start until late September, early October. Uh, of course we're in the southern hemisphere and the sun's 
just starting to be longer in the sky down here. Um, we don't get that lovely spring warmth and that you get on the mainland. Uh, mainland being that big island to the north of um, Tasmania's northern island is called Australia. <laughs> oh, sorry, we are Australia, aren't we? Um, When you paint the um, the myrtles in close, they just add this beautiful decorative pattern into the light. Uh, I've just found this particular brush I'm using. Um, it's uh, a long pointed round brush, uh, you can see it there, and uh, I love the long lengths, um, my other brushes I use are, are a long pointed flat brush, pick one up so you can see, so there's a big version of it, that's a size 6, so I go down to a size 2, I love that long filbert, um, they're pretty hard to get hold of, but uh, I just give some beautiful light, uh, touches you're able to paint they hold paint so you don't have to restock your paint as quickly as you might elsewise and, uh, so I'm just using um, well at the moment I'm using some Prussian blue uh, which is a, a blue of Australian bush, some Australian leaf green, just to green it up a little bit, and, um, and a little bit of cad yellow just to lighten it. And that gives me a And I'm using a classic or, 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 or middle of the road medium. The uh, painting underneath has got the mediums I've been using. It's been a number one or a lean medium and then a mix of lean and, um, and classic. Um, there's a whole heap of these up here I want to paint in. You know, so don't have to be fussy. You've got to be confident in your brush stroke, though. So you can't just sort of go, "Oh, I've got to be careful here." Um, you do have to be careful, but you've got to have the experience, practice with your brush. Um, I just actually spent. Uh, two months in Europe and spent a lot of time looking into galleries at all the famous old masters paintings in particular. But I did see a good range of uh, you know, Picassos and, and the modernists and the postmodernists and impressionists and the, a lot of secessionists. But um, when it comes down to it, uh, I've always been a tonal painter and so the, the, the masters are uh, people I learn from most because they're using paint the similar way to I am um, but I learn from all artists I don't you know, you know just because I'm a realistic painter doesn't mean that I don't love impressionist palettes and and what the modernists are doing I love it very much it's just what this is my unique look and space and, uh, now because this painting has not been worked on for a while, the area in here and in here is very matte and flat because the paint's dried really much and that will change significantly when I put a final glaze over the top but I don't have to put a, a um, do that will show up at the final stage of the painting, don't have to reactivate that, it's basically finished. But on.
So this chute is actually the sassafras of here as well. Um, and you can sort of see through this area here the, the light hitting that. And it's beautiful right this second. I don't know whether you can see that in the camera, but the light's hitting it again. The clouds have moved out. So when you get this dappled light or this changing light, you know, you, you've just got to decide what you're painting and what you're not painting. And Come back a little bit and look and just check. Um, so yes, I come back and work on that one. It'll, it'll um, brighten itself up as I come across. I just got to decide where I'm taking these these um, branches through. I've got one row here. I might there's another row comes in through here. Uh, Too much oil on that, and I don't want them to dribble. And all these will get sticks, and and uh, when the light's coming from behind, you get that shine of white light on top of the leaf, and the sheen of the leaf it changes colour often. Uh, and the, when the light goes behind, you get these amazing greens and. Uh, that's what makes rainforest painting beautiful. Um, you get the same effect with gum leaves, but they're not as uh, commonly um, see-through. Um, gum leaves are an oily leaf, very much designed to, to um, give a, a resistance, a wax resistance, if you like, to losing moisture through them and um, I just added some green into this one so it's it is green but it's a really dark green there those will come across lighter as I go across You can sort of see that long, spiny, spindly um, leaf structure of the sassafras. This painting is going to be called Lyre, and the reason for that's pretty obvious. It's shaped like a lyre. It's even got these what look like strings coming up from this growth, this fruit growth that's died off. Um, so it's quite a good name for for um, for, for this tree. Um, and these are like garlands, so like a garland across the tree. Um, this branch here has probably got some in there as well, so I'll put those in. So sometimes it will go which way the brush fall to, to give what you want. It probably works better upside down like that. Am I worried? No, if they're not quite there.
sometimes you just have to paint the areas that you're working on and not worry about the complexity your eye will add complexity as it sees them coming in add some in from the top here Often one of the hardest places to paint is right on the top of the canvas. Making sure that you're indicating that the tree goes further up. Gives the eye the ability to go, yep, yep, let's keep going. So you'd be probably seeing this on my YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe and, and, and like and follow. I'm not posting much at the moment, so it's pretty thin on the ground. You won't see much coming through for a little while, but I've got a lot of stuff I'm going to be putting up soon. And, uh, and so just be aware of that, that uh, there's uh, more coming. Working on those top bits again. A lyre is a celebration instrument. And of course, in Australia, we have the lyre bird, uh, which is found in rainforests but not here in Taz. I've Pretty sure we don't have it here in Tasmania, but when I was painting the rainforest of Marysville and in the dry rainforest in Sydney, um, yeah, I came across a lot of a lot of uh, lyre birds. They're magnificent. Lie birds are very happy to trust humans. They, they haven't had too bad a history, I don't think. Um, I think because they were such a stunning creature, um, they, uh, they weren't shot for food or things like that in the early days. So they, they really didn't have any problems with uh, trust of of uh, humans and uh, I think because as humans when we see a live bird we just stand in, in, in amazement and all we go still and, and uh, you know, to be able to hear a live bird imitate things with its call is quite amazing um, it's, it's stunning really um, and we uh, so often when there's a lot of birds around, the humans in the bush are quiet because, hey, um, you get to hear uh, those stunning sounds. Uh, so I don't care where I am right now, sometimes you get lost in the leaves. That's there. No, that's there. there. So even here I've got some leaves, but they're not that dark. So here I will put them in. That's that. Are you 
you can hear the birds in the forest around me. At least I hope you can. It's a rifle bird or a whip bird. Heard there. It's actually when you hear that, it's sort of like a two stage. It's actually a male and a female calling. Not sure what that bird was. It's a There's a lot of wrens around here. Fairy wrens, beautiful blue fairy wren is the male. Um, Sure what that one is. My sister is a, match, a massive twitcher bird watcher. Mm. She doesn't necessarily know them. Mm. Doesn't live here in Chaz. Unless she'll find them. It's one of the, the beauties of um, painting in Tasmania, uh, well, painting plain air, not only in Tasmania, is the amount of sounds of the forest. The creek's going on around me. I hope that's not drowning out my voice too much. Probably need to speak up a bit for that reason. I've got a headphone in, but uh, hopefully he's recording this okay. Pleased, I thought the light was about to go go for good for the day, and it hasn't. So it's making me quite happy. Been waiting so long to get out to paint on this painting. If you uh, have got here just by accident through <laughs> whatever means, you need to. If you found the fact I've got this YouTube channel, um, check out my Facebook and my Instagram. My Instagram and Facebook both are Russell McCain or Facebook Russell McCain Art for my professional site. Um, I'm an advantage that I'm, there's not there's only two, not many, there's two Russell McCains in the world. And the other Russell McCain lives in Boston and I'm a friend on Facebook with him. He chats, he loves my painting. Um, I think he's pretty chuffed that there's another Russell McCain that's doing things. But on my Instagram channel, um, just in the last six months, it's gone a bit haywire, not haywire, good wire. Viral is what you call it. It's gone very viral. And um, a lot of my, my paintings that I've just finished, ones that are in this site here and this area, uh, have just gone over a million, a million and a half. Um, views and it's probably uh, getting up that way on not quite a million and a half but 1.3 that's close <laughs> so chat to me uh, say hi um, but when you get a million followers or a million followers not a million followers a million views and you've got 70,000 followers that, we'll have by the end of tonight and um, when you've got that many followers you know, it's really impossible to uh, make a comment on everything when I only had 300 500 followers a thousand followers like anyone who wrote I wrote back and so it's yeah, 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 good conversation stuff like that uh, now um, the best I can do is try and if I find it and doesn't slip off into the Neverland somewhere um, I try and um, you know, do a heart, say, hey, I've seen it, I've read it, thank you very much, I appreciate the fact that you've stopped and, and you have responded. Um, but if you write a little bit more, you know, a couple of, couple of lines and take some time, ask me questions, 
uh, you know, ask me, you know, what, you know, what happens or what I'm doing in, in a certain context, I will respond and I will try my hardest to, um, to, to respond. I had someone, someone wrote to me last night and said, or yesterday and said, hey, I love to do plein air painting, but I don't know how I can carry a wet painting home. And uh, I know the problem, I've had it for years. Um, if it's a small painting, I just put them flat on the back seat and make sure I don't have an accident. Um, <laughs> but uh, bigger paintings like this are a bit harder. So I did a little reel for her, an Instagram reel, to show how I did it and how I secure it. And, and you know, that's posted up at the moment. Of course, on YouTube, you might be seeing this, you know, five years in the future. Um, you know, the painting's well and truly finished. Um, so have a look at the date, but if you have a look at the date, you can scroll back through my Instagram page and, and you'll come across the, the recent stuff. Oh, the, not recent stuff, the, the things I'm just referring to now. Um, they don't disappear on Instagram, they just get lost in the, in the age of time. Um, oh, I'm going to stop the film have a bit of a cup of tea sit down and have a look i've been going on this painting these sassafras leaves for a while so we'll see how we stop thanks for following by the way and um and uh well, i might just come back around and say this <laughs> you see my mug as i say thank you thank you for for watching the video and uh please subscribe like um so you can see them come up some more. I know I have a massive amount of artists following me, so these particular paintings are for the artists too. They can see how it's done. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm just so pleased that uh, that people are appreciating what I'm doing. I've been doing it for 50 years, and and uh, I'm hope I've got another 20 years left in me, frankly. But we'll see what happens. But uh, thank you and bless you for following, and uh, see you again on another video.